Hi everybody, my name is Hopin Oaz Bears from Bear Science Lab, and welcome back to Probability. Today we're going to be talking about the normal distribution. So, why is the normal distribution useful? And first of all, what is it? Well, it's a bell-shaped curve. So using our very state-of-the-art smart board here, we're gonna take e to the minus f squared. Here it is. There's our little buddy. That right there is the normal distribution. But why do we care again? So, why is this useful? Well, let's have a specific example, right? Let's say that the approval of a city mayor in a certain city by one poll is 70 percent now another pollster is a little bit skeptical of this result and they want to test the polls themselves so before they actually go out and do it they think well we're going to sur survey a thousand people and then What's the probability that more than 700 of them, like the other survey said, are going to say they approve of the mayor? So what's the chance of this happening? Well, first, you take the probability that somebody says, yes, I like the mayor, and repeats that 700 times. Then, you take the probability that someone says, no, I hate the mayor, and repeat that 300 times. Then, you multiply that by 1,000 to 300. Yeah, um, let's see if Desmos can calculate that. What's 1,000 to 300? Well, it just, um, 1,000, does this calculator even have a factorial sign? Yes, it does. Undefined, okay, that's not a good sign, but what happens if we divide? Hello? Divided by 700 factorial. Okay, still undefined. 300 factorial. Uh, oh, that's shit, that says 3000. Uh, still undefined. Yeah, I don't think this is going to do us much good. But let's see what happens when we try to model this for something smaller. Well, you get, let's say we're surveying only 10 people, and we want to know the chance that 7 of them like the mayor. Well, that just gives us this. And, I mean, that should be much easier to calculate, right? All you have to do is take... 10 factorial I'm going to go berserk because it takes you ha you have to hit every single button on this guy twice sometimes three times in order to make it function and that's going to drive me insane Okay 120 Great no one defined times no more going to this tab. 0.7 to the 7 times 0.3 to the 3. We're, we're trying to... Oh, shit. Oh, sorry. Well, excuse my French. Uh, 7. Mm. No, that cubed the whole thing? <laughs> what? Point two six six eight. Good. But that took a really long time. And we don't just want that. We also want to know the chance that eight of them, nine of them, all ten of them, like the mayor. So, no, I have to graph this. There's a reason I have to. So, I mean, what happens if we try to graph this? 
let's call our sample size S. And we can set it to whatever we want. Let's call it 10 right now. Obviously, our sample size can't be below zero, and we can't have fractional sample size. So, we have s is equal to 10. Then, the probability that you got from the other poll that a random person is going to like to make. And let's say that's, I don't know, 0.5 at this point. And that has to change between 0 and 1. Obviously, there can't be a negative or more than 100% probability, unless you're an especially dumb dictator. So, wow. So, what happens now when we try to graph the distribution for these? Well, hiding this for a second, you're about to see some crazy resemblance. S equals 10, P equals 0.5 or we can change it to whatever we want. But, it's going to be 1 minus p to the x times, sorry, p to the x times 1 minus p to the s minus x times S choose X. So, that's actually incredibly difficult to graph this thing. But, in short, it looks a little bit something like this. For very high values of X. So then, you take this, and you normalize it, which means you divide the entire function by its maximum, to make sure the maximum is 1, and then you center it. And you get this bell-shaped distribution. You know what else is bell-shaped? e to the minus x squared. But, a lot of you might say, well, I mean, there are a lot of functions that look sort of bell-shaped, right? So, why talk about this? Well, that's going to come in the form of the central limit theorem, which we have to prove the law, the law of large numbers in order to talk about that first. So, since we haven't proven the law, law of large numbers yet, we can't talk about it. But once we do, using this is so easy. All you have to do is, Instead of adding up 1,000 to 300 times uh, 0.7 to the 700, 0.3 to the 300, this would already break a lot of our modern computers. Now you have to add that up to 299 more turns, all the way up until you get 0.7 to the 1,000. And I mean, this would take so long that it's pointless. But here's what you can do. You can take e to the minus x squared, and calculate, that since probability is 0.7, all you have to do is calculate, once we're 0.7 away, how much area is from here until the end of the graph. And that's it. Anything that can do numerical integration, while it's technically harder to do by hand by a little bit, anything that can do numerical integration can use this and do just fine compared to, well, that. So that's why we use the normal distribution. Thanks everyone for watching.